sail on Halloween. How do you want to sail? In costume. Of course, in costume. And in case you haven't guessed it, I am Cruella, and this is one of my Dalmatians. I'll show you my other Dalmatians shortly. And we are cruising down the, the Chesapeake. We're heading to Norfolk, and we originally were going to anchor out in front of Norfolk. And what are we going to do now? We are going to go down to Waterside Marina, where two families with two different vessels uh, have been able to find room for us to squeeze in with them. And then we're going to wait for a weather window to get on down to North Carolina. So happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. So I'm going to head down now and show you the dogs in costume. Here's Anubis Dalmatian. Here's Nuala Dalmatian. And here's Mocha Dalmatian. We passed three lighthouses on our sail down the Chesapeake. Point, No Point Lighthouse, Smith Point Lighthouse, and Wolf Trap Lighthouse. Our sail down the Chesapeake started in Solomon's Island, Maryland, and continued for 100 nautical miles to Norfolk, Virginia, where we docked at Waterside Marina. We arrived well after sunset, and fortunately, our friends were there to help us dock. In nautical terms, there is something called a king's tide. And what you see right here is, this is high tide. All these fixed docks, there's a dock underneath all this water. It's about four inches. Uh, and so for us to get off this fixed dock, we literally have to either walk on water or walk in the water. And in about an hour or so, we'll see the deck again. We'll be able to walk off. After a couple hours, the tide went out and we were able to see the sights of Norfolk with the lab mariners. We especially enjoyed the street art and the mermaid sculptures. So when the king tide subsides, we can actually see the dock again. And it's a beautiful day, no wind, blue sky, nice sun. It's actually warming up a little. It is time for us to leave. We are about ready to go on a 340 nautical mile sail from Norfolk, Virginia, out to the Chesapeake, and then all the way around to frying pan shoals which is just uh, off the coast of Wilmington North Carolina and then all the way up Cape Fear to get to Wilmington so uh, roughly we think it'll be about a 50 hour sail right now lots of motoring but it'll be easy easy waves around Hatteras so that's a nice thing meet Lab Mariner our home in the water and her crew Anubis the Huntress Jim the captain, Mocha, the camera dog, Nuala, the greeter, and Stephanie, the cruise director. We are just about ready to cross over the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel, and we're with two other catamarans and a monohull and a cargo ship. And it seems like the perfect time to be doing this. I think there are enough other boats that this is the right time to be going. Absolutely. I think I counted like 14 to 18 vessels all heading out of the Chesapeake within about 45 minutes of one another. So yes. we all came to the same conclusion that leaving the inlet of the Chesapeake at three o'clock in the afternoon was the right call. As you can see behind me, we are just passing the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel. So goodbye Chesapeake and hello Atlantic Ocean. It has been so calm that you weren't even able to grow. Yes, it's an awesome sail and when you can do burgers and relax, it's a good thing. Howdy guys, how are you doing on your day two of our voyage? 
So what makes a passage around Cape Hatteras so dangerous? Between Virginia Beach and Beaufort, North Carolina, is a long chain of barrier islands known as the Outer Banks. There are several inlets along the Outer Banks, but these are subject to shifting sands with shoaling that extends for several miles and are thus generally avoided. Cape Hatteras is also the point where the warm waters of the northbound Gulf Stream run closest to the North Carolina coast before turning eastward across the Atlantic Ocean. In addition to the Gulf Stream, a southern extension of the Labrador Current brings a cold current all the way to Cap Hatteras. The clash between the Gulf Stream's warm waters and the cold waters of the Labrador Current cause rough winds, fog, and unstable weather conditions. We are coming up on our Hatteras waypoint. We're doing five, five and a half knots with our sails out and we hear a bunch of chatter of a number of other vessels and two of the boats are about a mile and a half out from us out in the deeper section and they are reporting really difficult currents from the Gulf Stream. And then there's another boat that's about two miles ahead of us that is closer in, and they are also complaining of significant Gulf Stream currents. We've made it around our waypoint, and we have gone from five and a half knots to between one and two. And I think I'm gonna follow what the boat closest to shore is trying to do, and that is find if there's any type of space between the shoreline and where the Gulf Stream is. If we can find a quieter, less Gulf Stream current, we'll pick up a knot or two in speed. It would both help us get to our destination faster and usually there is less wave action there. So we're making our way over there. But again, we're only doing one to two knots and they're about two and a half nautical miles away. So we're going to be pounding and going into current for a number of hours before we find a way to extricate ourselves from the Gulf Stream. That's just the nature of the beast. The Gulf Stream and Hatteras are very close to one another, almost always. And you have to deal with this each and every time. We're going to be in the Bahamas for six months and during that time we're going to have to have enough provisions for not only ourselves but also for the dogs. So can you buy dog food in the Bahamas? And the answer is yes, you can find stores that sell dog food but the question is, is it going to be enough and the kind that you want for your dogs? So I'm going to give you some video clips of stores in the Bahamas and what they're selling as far as dog food. At Whitewater Grocery on Great Harbor Key in the Berry Islands, only 5 to 10 pound bags of dog food were available. We saw a fair amount of dogs on Cat Island, so it was no surprise that at the New Bite Food Market, there was not only 40, but also 50 pound bags of Alpo, Purina, as well as Pedigree brands. Moving on to one of the larger grocery stores that we found, Food Fair in Spanish Wells in Eleuthera had 40 to 50 pound bags of Elpo, Purina, and Pedigree brand dog foods, and they were nicely stocked. And finally, a visit to one of the largest stores that we saw in the Bahamas, Maxwell's in Marsh Harbor in the Abacos, had a large selection of 40 to 50 pound bags of Beneful Sport Trail, Pedigree, Purina, Elbow, and a number of additional brands that I've never even heard of. 
So as you can see from those video clips, there are stores that are selling dog food, but it's usually Alpo or Pedigree, and sometimes the bags are just too small. So what we end up doing is we bring it with us. And the question then is how much dog food do we need for our three dogs? So let me just show you a simple calculation. So first, you're going to measure out how much dog food they eat in the course of a day. So our dogs eat one of these cups twice a day. So that's three dogs times two of these, and that gives us 40.8 ounces per day. So we can either make the conversion to pounds because our dog food is sold in pounds now, or we can do it later. Let's just make it now, and that ends up being 2.55 pounds per day. And we're gonna be there for about six months. So we like to add an extra two months just in case for some reason we get stuck there. So that it's like eight months worth of dog food times just an easy 30 days per month. And that ends up being 240 days times that 2.55 pounds per day. And it ends up being 612 pounds that we're gonna need. And each of our dog food bags is 40 pounds. So we need between 15 and 16 bags. That's a lot of dog food. So how hard is it to store all that dog food? Fortunately, we have an area in our forward cabin under the bed and it's plastic lined on all sides and then the top has a wood cover over it so it actually stays dry and it stays free from insects so it's a great area for us we can actually just store the dog food as is and we don't have any problems for the entire time we're out but if you don't have such a good area and it isn't quite so free from moisture you're going to want to put them in plastic bags so i'm going to show you what that area looks like with 612 pounds of dog food and i'm also going to show you some clips of how much fun it was us getting that 612 pounds of dog food onto the boat all right so this is the second half Woo. all right think we're gonna have enough well i'll have to lose one of the dogs to conserve <laughs> one of the dogs will have to lose some weight exactly no i think there is more than enough okay From Wilmington, North Carolina, we exit the Cape Fear River and have a 470 nautical mile sail in the Atlantic Ocean to reach Green Turtle Key in the Abacos. We just left Wilmington this morning. We had to wait until the bridge would open for it and we are heading down the Cape Fear River now and we'll be out into the Atlantic. Yes. Guys, I'll cuddle up in your nighttime spot. Anubis, you're cuddled up. How about you do, Zoka? You're cuddled up for your nighttime spot. We'll be crossing the Gulf Stream at around midnight tonight. So what makes a Gulf Stream crossing so difficult? There are several factors to consider when planning a Gulf Stream crossing. Firstly, you should not cross when there is a strong wind with a northern component. A northern component causes the waves to build higher than they normally would as they meet the north moving Gulf Stream and they will be steeper and almost square in shape. The best time to cross is with a wind less than 15 knots with a southern component. Secondly, the warm water coming from the Caribbean can affect the weather in the Gulf Stream, and if it meets a cold weather system, can cause lightning, thunderstorms, heavy rain, and strong winds. And thirdly, there is a lot of commercial traffic traveling north and south along the Gulf Stream, which has to be avoided. Gulf Stream. The blue line is the direction that our vessel is making. So the blue line is our course over ground and the black line is showing where the boat is actually pointing toward. So in other words, even though we're pointing toward the black line, we're actually advancing about 25 degrees to the port or to the left. And the reason why we're pointing 25 to 30 degrees different from where our course over ground is, is because we're in the Gulf Stream. We're right now doing about seven to nine knots course over ground but the Gulf Stream is roughly three nautical mile going from our right to our left so literally in order to compensate for 
that conveyor belt of water underneath us that keeps pushing us to the left, we have to actually keep pointing to the right or the starboard side and match our speed with the course of the water speed. So as long as we're in the Gulf Stream, our blue and black lines will be about 20 to 30 degrees apart. As soon as we get out of the Gulf Stream, all of a sudden the blue and the black line will start lining up again because we're no longer being pushed from right to left by about three nautical miles per hour. Good morning. Good morning. How was your night last night? Um, it was pretty good. Waves were uh, pretty easy. Wind swirled around us, so we got a number of different types of winds. After about 45 hours of sailing, we start to see land to our starboard side. We enter into the Nunjack Channel and continue into the Sea of Abaco to anchor in Coco Bay off the Green Turtle Key. Roger, Green Turtle Marina. We will wait until tomorrow once the officer gets to your offices from the ferry. And again, thank you for giving us a shout out tomorrow once you know that the officer is on premises. Over. So what's the situation? That was Green Turtle Marina. The officer is not there today. She comes in on the ferry tomorrow, luckily. So we will go in once Green Turtle Marina calls us up on VHF. We just keep our yellow flag flying for another day and we'll be able to check in without any problems. Join us next week when we check in with the customs officer and then we explore Green Turtle Key as well as Fiddle Key.